Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video for you on kind of getting started with developing on an Apache Spark cluster on your own local machine. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of comments, uh, you know, and just general requests for more Spark content, more idea of, hey, how do I create and submit a PySpark script locally? Um, since it has become to my attention that most people don't have the access I do to things like Databricks and hosted Spark clusters. Um, and so before I kind of get started with, you know, showing you how to get set up locally, I think it's important just to explain kind of what Spark is and why it's useful. Um, and so Spark is really, it, so it says, you know, this could be a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science, and machine learning on single node machines or clusters. Um, and while that seems like kind of generic, it really does describe kind of what Spark does in that it is just an engine that allows you to run really complex scripts, really complex queries, at scale by distributing the load across many different machines. Um, so especially as AI and ML um, have been just ever growing in uh, relevancy and just overall use, there's more of a use or more of a need for large scale data processing systems that can handle that. And so Spark has emerged or has already been around as one of them. And so pretty easy for a lot of engineers that are e already experienced with Spark to start using it for, you know, their ML and AI workflows. And so I won't get too deep into like how it works under the scenes, but just know that Spark is able to take, you know, your Python code that you would otherwise be running on your local machine and run it on across a cluster or many different machines. So it can operate queries in parallel, it can run many different scripts in parallel. Um, you can have scripts that split data into many smaller chunks and distribute that across a Spark cluster. Um, and so while there are a few different ways of interacting with Spark today, what we're gonna get started with um, is PySpark, which is the Pythonic interface for interacting uh, with Spark as a scalable compute engine. So now I'm gonna shift it over to my local development environment. I'm gonna show you how you can get set up with a local Spark cluster, um, and then show you how you can write your first uh, Spark script that will actually use that Spark cluster. Um, and then we'll use this video probably as a springboard into more videos around, you know, kind of more advanced and complex Spark use cases. So to get started installing uh, Spark and then PySpark, uh, what we'll do is just run pip install PySpark. Um, and what this will do is install out our, all of everything we need from PySpark to actually run all of our workflows. So I'm going to let this finish downloading, not waste your time. Um, and then I'll come back when it's done and show you the rest of the steps to get it spinning up a Spark environment. So once that's installed, uh, one way of running Spark, uh, if you just want to run it in the command line, is you can just use PySpark here. And what this will do is just start up a new Spark environment in your command line, um, you can see this is packaged by Conda, and after a second, this will uh, actually spin up and see kind of right here. Um, and yeah, it's just gonna take one second before you'll see a cool little flash up in the interface here where it's going to uh, just show Spark. And here you go. So here, just a Spark, Spark version. Um, and you can see I can go to the Spark web UI at this address. So if I go open this up, um, in my eye, we can see I have my PySpark environment. So just a local Spark uh, environment running just on my local machine. Um, and so this is one option of it. However, if you want to uh, use Docker and you have a Dockerized version, you can also run it using Docker. So if I go back into my local environment and I'm going to run the official Docker supported image. Um, so exit this. And then what I will do is type in this command, docker, run it, and then just the path to a Spark image. And what this will do is pull the Spark hosted image and then start it running docker on my local machine. Um, so again, I'll pause and just let this finish downloading and then show you what that looks like. And so here you can see I have PySpark running in much the same way. It's actually just using an older Python version uh, because that Docker image, I guess, has an older Python version, has been updated. And then if I open Docker Desktop, you can see it was created as magical swirlies um, within my Docker Desktop. So I just want to kind of show you the optionality there of the two different ways you can run Spark if you want to. Um, this is just feel good if you like containerization, if you want to make sure it's, you know, kind of all self-contained. Um, I'm just going to, you know, use this now to kind of show you the rest of it. And so now you have Spark up and running. Uh, the next step is obviously to actually start writing your first Spark script. So how do we do that? So to create a Pi, our first PySpark Pi Spark script, uh, the first thing you need to do is, as with almost every Python script, is import some packages. So here we're importing from PySpark SQL, Spark Session. 
Now, Spark's best session is really important because you're always going to need to instantiate or just tell your PySpark trip to use a particular Spark session. And so Spark's session, say that times three times fast, um, is essentially just an instance of Spark that is going to run your particular job. Um, so this could be, as you could say, you know, I already have one running here. So that with get or create, it'll either use an existing session um, or create one if one doesn't exist. You can just see setting an app name um, and the app is, you know, just this demo Spark session that we're going to create. Um, so after you've created your session and you have Spark available to be used within the script, uh, then you can create a data frame. So next we're down here is data frame equals spark dot create data frame. And here we're just inserting some different names with some random ages. Um, so we have first name and age. Um, and you can see this, you know, looks very similar to how you create a data frame within Python. Um, and that's because PySpark is really just Python uh, that is running on a distributed complete computing cluster. So nothing really too crazy about it. And so if you already have some Python skills that you're looking to leverage and you're thinking, oh, Spark isn't going to be good for this, it's really easy to get started with um, if you already know Python. Um, it's just really that initial step like, hey, I need to set up my own local Spark cluster and then use that. Um, so then if we hit run Python here, um, I'm just going to save this uh, as Spark example script. And then, so obviously you need to save this document before you actually are able to use it. So I'm just going to save that there. Um, Spark example script and then hit run again. And so we'll see here, it's going to run my script within the terminal. And so quick reason why that didn't work. Um, I actually have my base Python for terminal not set to the mini con environment that I just installed PySpark into. So I am now switching to using a Jupyter notebook um, where you can select a kernel um, and Python environments. Make sure you're using the Python environment that you actually have installed uh, pan or your PySpark in. Um, I need to figure out what's going on with my terminal, but for now, just wanted to you know be able to show you this within the demo. So it's so actually make it easier to run individual chunks um, since Jupyter Notebook is essentially just Python scripts within particular blocks. So here, if I just hit play again, we will see this succeed really quickly, I guess. So we're creating our PySpark session. And then if we add this line DF show, this will do is actually just show that data set that we just created. Um, so here show DF show, and we should see in the log output, the output of this actual data frame. Um, so stages were the stages of Spark processing. And there we go. Here is the data frame that we just created within uh, Spark up here, now shown within the logs. So obviously this is a very simple example, but let's add a, another life stage column and then use that as the conditional logic um, to define whether or not someone's a child or a teenager um, or an adult. So to do that, what we'll do is add a new line, uh, PySpark SQL functions, import column and when, and then what we're going to do is we are going to have a new df1, df dot with column. So add a line instead of df show, we'll add df dot with column, where we're going to create a second data frame, df1, which is saying with column life stage. So adding a column to this existing data frame um, and then saying with when this column age is greater than 13, they're a child between 13 and 19, they're a teenager, and otherwise they are an adult. Um, and so once we do that, if we type in df1.show as well down here and run this PySpark script again, it should show us an updated uh, matrix of our first name, age, and whether each individual person is a teenager, child, or adult. And boom, there we go, right on schedule. Um, so here we have first name, age, life stage, um, adult, child, teenager, uh, teenager. So did pretty bang up job there as well. Um, so, and now if we also, we didn't actually change the first data frame. So if we change this to back to just DF show, you can see that we still have uh, just that same first data frame available, um, but we've actually created a second one. Um, so this is important to know that Spark operations, they won't mutate the data frame. You're going to need to create a new data frame to contain any changes for subsequent operations. Um, so there's not really a concept of like with pandas, you know, you can drop columns, you can do kind of things like that. Here, you have to create a whole new data frame if you want to alter any of the underlying attributes. Now, even though you can't mutate the underlying data frame, there are some features where you can you know, say, hey, now I just want to filter the show of this data frame just to only include, let's say, teenagers and adults. 
So here, day F1 uh, in the conditional dot where uh, is in life stage column, uh, is in teenager adult, only show those particular columns. And so then if we run this script again, what we'll see is that this will output a data frame that is only going to be for our teenagers and adults and little old Lee, who's only three years old, will not be shown in it. So this is additional, you know, kind of conditional logic based on, hey, I want to filter and just look at the people um, that meet such and such criteria. So you can see here, just Sue, Bob, and Heo made the cut um, for this new DF1 table. Now, another function we can run uh, if we import uh, average up here. So go up to our PySpark SQL functions that we're importing. We're also gonna import average. So just another function that we can use. And what this will do is exactly like it says, select and show the average uh, of ages in a particular data set. So here, if we replace this df1 with df.select average age uh, dot show, and then press plus, you'll see that we now have a DF1, which is selecting uh, all the ages and giving us the average of them. So very simple calculation, um, and just giving us the average age uh, for all of our, all the people within our uh, little silly data set. And then we also can compute the average uh, age for each life cycle. So you can actually combine uh, dot average dot show and then a new condition group by. You can also you know, add your dot filter here as well, um, where here, if we, there we go, life stage, average age, and then you have adult, 53.5, children is 3.0, and teenagers 13, because obviously those averages are the exact same. Um, so useful stuff there as well, and just kind of a more, you know, Pythonic uh, API-driven way of, you know, running a query rather than having to just do, runs pure SQL statements on it. Um, now, additionally, you can uh, use SQL as well to perform a lot of the same operations. So if you wanted to do something like, hey, Spark.sql select average age from df1, df1 equals df1 uh, dot show. And so this is just a different way of achieving the exact same outcome. Um, so you, with PySpark, you have the optionality of, hey, do you want to have a Python driven approach? Do you want to have a SQL driven approach? Or do you want to have them both at the same time? Um, and so similarly, you can say, hey, select uh, life stage average age from that df1 group, group by life stage. And you can see how, you know, I personally think the Pythonic way of doing it is a lot easier and a lot clearer than a super long string. But some people are going to think this is a much better way. Uh, some people really like writing everything in SQL, and so they might choose to do so. Um, and so that's all I got for you today on kind of your intro to Spark uh, tutorial. Um, let me know where you'd like me to take my Spark knowledge and kind of my Spark tutorials uh, from here. Um, and, you know, I'll start making more content on Spark and, you know, different things that you can do with it in relation to big data and even small data. Um, so have a good one. I hope this scratched that itch for people that are looking for more Spark content. And I hope you learned something. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.